meeting of September 10th, the first budget hearing to order. And before I even ask for roll call, can we have a moment of silence to think about our friends in the Bahamas and what they're going through? Okay, thank you. And I also want to take this moment to publicly put on our record thank you to Stephen G. for his unbelievably generous support of the city's efforts for the people of the Bahamas. Okay, with that said, I'm going to ask the clerk for roll call. Mayor Weissman? Here. Vice Mayor Landman? Here. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Here. Commissioner Mizrahi? Here. Commissioner Narofsky? Here. Commissioner Shelley? Here. Commissioner Weinberg? Here. Mr. Wasson? Here. Mr. Wolpen? Here. You have a quorum. Thank you so very much. Okay, I'm going to call a very special person up today to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, Ellis Landauer. He is one of our ninth graders at Don Sofer Aventura Charter High School, and he's aspiring to be a surgeon. So please, Ellis, come up. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. And, and while you're there, Ellis, will you just give us a comment on your first couple of, your first week and a half of school? Um, the school's been great so far. And, I really and your principal is sitting right there, so be careful. I hate him to say that. Oh, it's been great so far, and I really appreciate how much, like, you guys have done to make the school look out and, like, its future become, like, so amazing. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Okay. Um, this is the first budget hearing, so I'm going to ask the city attorney to read the ordinance. Thank you, Mayor. Item 3A. An ordinance of the City of Aventura, Florida, establishing and adopting the City of Aventura ad valorem tax operating millage levy rate at 1.7261 mills per thousand dollars of taxable assessed property value, which is 1.80% above the rolled back rate of 1.6956 mills computed pursuant to state law for the 2019 tax year. Providing for conflicts, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Can I please have a motion for approval of this ordinance? I'll Made motion. by Commissioner Narotsky, seconded by Commissioner Shelley. I'm going to ask the city manager to review this item. Thank you, Mayor. This ordinance adopts the Ed Valam rate of, as it was said, 1.7261. It's important to note this uh, rate has been the same rate for many, many years, and I know this 23 years. <laughs> Um, and they're very proud of that. This uh, millage rate will generate ten million seven hundred and forty thousand one hundred and eighty-six dollars, six hundred and thirty-two dollars. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me back that up. It'll generate seventeen million six hundred and eleven thousand seven hundred and seven dollars from a taxable value. That's all the property in in um, Aventura of ten billion. $740,186,632. That's the money that we use to operate and um, run the city. Okay, I'm going to open the item for public comment. Is there anyone in the public that would like to speak to this item? Seeing there's none, I'm going to close it for public comment, and I'm going to ask if any members of the commission have any questions or comments. Commissioner Narotsky. Just very quickly, I think we are the lowest in the county, if not in the tri-county area. Is that accurate? Yes. Um, that's just kudos to everybody for running an efficient and tight ship, and I know that we prioritized low taxation here. It's an incentive to live here, and it's a wonderful accomplishment. So I want to thank everybody for that. Thank you. Um, Anyone else? Okay, then I'm going to ask the clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Mizrahi? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. 
Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes on first reading. Thank you. And I'm going to announce that the second budget public hearing is scheduled for September 18th at 6 p.m. Which brings us to the next ordinance being considered, item B. I'll ask the city attorney to please read it. Thank you, Mayor. An ordinance of the City of Aventura, Florida, adopting the attached tentative operating and capital budget as reviewed and approved by City Commission at the review meeting held on July 18, 2019, as the City of Aventura final budget for the 2019-2020 fiscal year, pursuant to Section 4.05 of the City Charter, authorizing expenditure of funds established by the budget, providing for budgetary control, providing for personnel authorization, providing for gifts and grants, providing for amendments, providing for procedures regarding encumbrances and the reappropriation of unexpended capital appropriations, establishing the committed fund balance for capital reserve, providing for severability and providing for an effective date. Thank you. I'm going to ask for a motion for approval of the ordinance I'll made motion. by Commissioner Narotsky, seconded by Vice Mayor Landman. I'll ask the city manager to review the item. Mayor, thank you again. This provides for the basic funding in gen of the general and capital budget. At a workshop, we go over how the money is going to be allocated to each department. It provides for the operations of the departments, personnel costs, equipment purchasing, and all capital improvement improvements in the city. Thank you. Is there anyone in the public that would wish to address this item? Then I'm going to close the item to public comment, and I'm going to ask if any commissioners have any questions or comments. Commissioner Dr. Linda Marks. Um, at the workshop meeting, we talked about um, the salaries for staff, and there was a discussion about uh, a particular raise, whether it would be 2% or 3%. And I would just like to, before this is finalized, I would just like to ask the commission if they, you know, want to reconsider the issue of 3% versus 2%. It will not affect the millage or anything else, correct, Ren? No, it wouldn't. Okay. Um, Mayor, I want to say something. Well, what we're doing right now are comments to the ordinance being read. So Dr. Marks just made her comment to the ordinance being read. There is no motion that she made. So is there anyone else who has any comments on Ordinance B? Commissioner Ms. Rahi. When we were at the workshop, I agree with Dr. Marks on the 3% increase, but I also understand that the city is undergoing a lot of things, a lot of expenses, and we need to tight, like they say, tight our pants. We have a, a school, and we know that there are not a lot of construction out there. We don't have any more land to construct, so we really need to look into. So I tend to agree right now, even though the employees are the biggest assets we have, I have to tend to agree with the rest on staying at the 2%. Commissioner Shelley? Uh, yeah, Mr. Magic, could you tell us the difference in the cost from 2 to 3%? Approximately $87,000. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, if no one else wishes to speak to the item, then I'm going to close it. And I'm going to ask the clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Dr. Marks? No. Commissioner Mizrahi? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. Motion passes on first reading. Thank you. I'm going to now ask for a motion to adjourn the special budget meeting made by Commissioner Narotsky, seconded by Commissioner Shelley. Anybody opposed? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let me
me call the regularly scheduled city commission meeting September 10th to order. I will ask the clerk for roll call. Mayor Weissman? Here. Vice Mayor Landman? Here. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Here. Commissioner Mizrahi? Here. Commissioner Narofsky? Here. Commissioner Shelley? Here. Commissioner Weinberg? Here. Mr. Wasson? Here. And Mr. Wolpen? You have a quorum. Thank you so much. We've already had the Pledge of Allegiance with Ellis leading us, so we're going to move right into the agenda. Um, let me ask the city manager, are there any deletions or additions to our agenda? No, Mayor. Thank you so much. Item four, special presentations, employee services awards. I'm requesting the city manager to present the employee service awards. Please excuse my back. Um, we'd like to begin with a special award tonight, and I'd ask that Jeff, uh, Sergeant Jeff Burns and Officer John Tiley come up, along with uh, Bay Harbor Islands Police Chief Sean Hemingway, who's representing the Florida Poli uh, Police Chiefs Association. This is a special life-saving award that these officers were involved in. Sean. Good evening, Mayor Weissman and count the Commission. I'm sorry. My name is Sean Hemingway. I'm the District Four Director for Florida Chiefs Police Association. Tonight, it's my honor to present our life saving award uh, to two fine officers. This time, I'd like Chief Pegues, if you could join us. And Sergeant Jeff Burns and Officer Tilly, would you like to bring your families up? They're, we're good? Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. So I'm sure you guys have already been honored, but coming from Tallahassee, it's truly our privilege to be here to honor you once again for a tremendous act of valor and a life-saving uh, presentation. Excuse me. On, on August 13th, 2018, an explosion was reported at 100 Marina Mile, I'm sorry, Marina Way and Mariner Village community. Both Sergeant Burns and Officer Tilly were the first to arrive on the scene. When they arrived, they found a man lying on the floor um, on the ground alongside of a community guardhouse. They assessed the victim and determined he suffered near-fatal injuries consistent with a severe electrical shock. This victim was also burned all over his body. The victim was completely unresponsive. Sergeant Burns made an immediate assessment of the area and determined the source of an electrical shock and secured the scene so that they were safe to provide first aid. After doing so, both Sergeant Burns and Tilly turned their attention to a dying man. The victim's pulse was buzzing and vibrating and completely abnormal. Both began life-saving CPR for several minutes until Miami-Dade Fire Rescue appeared on the scene. The victim was in extremely critical condition prior to being airlifted to, uh, trauma right, to Ryder Trauma Center. The Miami-Dade Incident Commander, Captain Carmen, advised had it not been for these two gentlemen, the individual would have died. The investigation revealed the injured man was working for a cable company and laying a fiber optic cable under the ground. He reached into a hole and inadvertently grabbed 76,020 volts of power that immediately stopped his heart. Due to this miraculously saving, life-saving measure, the two officers uh, are responsible for the man surviving. It is with great pleasure that the Florida Chiefs Police Association awards Sergeant Jeffrey Burns and Officer John Tilly with our life-saving award. And yet this is just another example of Florida Police Chiefs coming down to a great police department and representing great work. Thank you, Chief Pegues, Ron Watson, and the Council on the Mayor. At this time, I'd like to ask Officer Rubin Brizuela <laughs> to come down. We had another office that was receiving, receiving a 20-year um, award. He couldn't be here tonight, so we'll come on up, Rubin. 
Just so you know, it's always a pleasure to, to recognize somebody with 20 years of service. Um, that's an amazing feat in this, in this uh, day and age, especially to stay in one department in Florida. So we're really lucky to have him. I'm just going to go over a few of his accomplishments. Uh, Ruben is a field training officer and has been one for most of his career. He's the kind of guy that gives back. Not to know this, but he's, a, he's also very much into training. He's a master taser, taser instructor, driver training instructor, an OC instructor, and for those old timers like me, that means tear gas or pepper spray. Uh, he has served in many capacities in our department, the traffic unit, the SWAT unit, honor guard, uh, CPU, which is crime prevention, and he's also a drone pilot. One of the things, though, that you do know about him, you should know about him, he's also the hand-to-hand -hand combat instructor or defensive training. Uh, he's the only guy when I get in the elevator. Um, he makes me a little nervous. And uh, if when you go for your training, you better make sure you don't owe him any money because it's going to be a long day for you in the gym. Uh, Ruben, I just want to say thank you. And it's my pleasure, sir. Okay. My pleasure. Welcome. Always has been. Thank you. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Um, the next order of business is really twofold. We have a new principal of ACES, so I want to welcome um, Anthony Trilkala, I hope, <laughs> to provide us an update on the school. Good evening, Mayor Wiseman and Commission. So um, we've been off to an amazing start this year. The, um, the hurricane obviously gave us a little bump in the road there last week, but we hit the ground running right back um, once we got back. The change, you know, was the first one for a long time in ACES, but the staff and the community have been amazing uh, throughout. They, they know I'm here to support them 100%, and without fail, everyone's been there to support me 100%, so it's been great. Um, and we've really been focusing not on change, but on renewal. So we're renewing a lot of commitments. One, um, our commitment to family engagement and communication. And if you follow our social media every single day, we're trying our best to post something that's relevant to the community and relevant to the families. Um, we're focusing a lot on collaboration. In fact, we've changed some of the language that we use instead of focusing on just literacy or math, we talk about collaboration. And uh, the literacy team has changed their, their laboratory to the collab lab, they like to call it. And um, so it's been awesome to do that. And then we're adding a lot more student voice and leadership opportunities, focusing primarily on how do we get elementary opportunities for leadership, because we've always had our student government at middle school. But now we're creating one for fifth grade and letting them lead the elementary school as well. Um, our theme this year is Mindset Matters. So our, our focus is on trying to build growth mindset mindfulness and, and everything attached to that. And we're, we're doing that through mind, Mindset Mondays. Those are emails that go out to the staff and we really try to collaborate on that. And then we have Mindset Monday information that goes out to the parents and the students as well. So our goal is to keep that going throughout the year. We already have it planned out months in advance and we'll just try to make sure we maintain that because if we're, if we're trying to do a Sunday night, it's definitely not gonna happen. Um, we're one-to-one -one now, fifth through eighth grade, which has been awesome. So every fifth through eighth grader has a Chromebook with them all day, every day. They pick it up in the morning and drop it off in the afternoon. And that's freed up some technology so that now fourth grade can have dedicated um, carts in their room. So even though they don't have them with them all day, they do have access to technology on a consistent basis. And then also, you know, the rest of the grades that want to check out equipment is, is available. And then we have resources to go in and push in for them. Um, we're doing our diagnostic assessments and we're wrapping that up to really see how we can take our data and drive our instruction. Um, we should be done with all of our diagnostics this week and really uh, meet the students where they are and grow them to where we need them to be. Um, we have this awesome thing where we're going to celebrate our new students this year and all of them will have a peer mentor. So it's rare at ACES to have new students, and when we do have them, sometimes it's hard for them because many of the students have been there together for years. So they'll be assigned a mentor, and it'll be a way that they have someone to soundboard off of. And then we're doing our character lessons. Respect was the first one. 
Um, they, they did their initial lesson the first Wednesday of the month, and their follow-up will be this Wednesday, and we'll do that every month um, following the Wednesday formats. And we coordinated with the city for the Bahamas Drive. It was a great um, time over the week. We had students come in and volunteer. And then on Saturday, uh, we had a lot of staff members and students come in and volunteer. We did our open house last Thursday for fifth through eighth grade. And then this Thursday, we'll do it for kindergarten through fourth grade. Uh, so again, it's been a great start. Um, everybody, again, has been very supportive um, in the community as well as in the school. And we look forward to continuing that progress. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Narotsky. I just wanted to make a comment because I know that um, it's been relatively recent, yeah. your appointments, so congratulations and Thank welcome. You, just wanted to extend that I know you have a great uh, rapport with the staff and our city manager, but um, your predecessor was, you know, at the meetings and, and always involved, so I've encouraged that, and I know that, you know, we're accessible and we want to do what's best, so if you have needs, if you have concerns, you know, we're, we're wide open to hear that. The last thing you want to do is, you know, for you to be um, timid in that. So if you have stuff you need, just come and see us. Absolutely. Thank Thanks. you. Commissioner Lamman. I also want to extend a warm welcome. I know you've been at the school, but obviously this is a new role and a new position. And you sound very excited and yeah, passionate definitely. about it. And I just want to say the social media activity has been impressive. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's continued good luck. Okay. Um, next, we have David McKnight giving us the update on Don So for Aventura High School. Good evening, Mayor and City Commission. It's good to be with you this evening. Um, to just let you know, we've gotten off to a pretty smooth start with the high school. It's always fun in a new building with new teachers and new students, but we really have met the challenge, and I think uh, the community has been incredibly supportive with everything we've been doing, and, and uh, the parents have just been amazing, and the students are by far uh, a, great, a great support to me, and, and we're looking forward to building a community and a culture at our school that we can all be proud of. The school enrollment currently is at 202, so we're, we're still uh, over-enrolled, which is exciting, and they're all Aventura residents at this time. We had a great first day. We literally rolled out the red carpet and ended the day with a DJ uh, club enrichment fair and ice cream for our students, and they seem to enjoy the first day activities. Speaking about uh, clubs and enrichments, we are working hard. All of our teachers have stepped up and agreed to sponsor a club or enrichment. So uh, they're rolling those out now, and our students will be involved in those as we move forward. We had a great turnout for parent orientation. Parents left the school, I think, feeling very good about their choice. They really enjoyed walking through the classrooms and seeing uh, the furniture that we are providing for their students. Um, and, and just the beauty of the building, I think that blew them away and they were really, really impressed. Um, everyone, students, faculty, and staff are settling in. Scheduling changes are essentially ended with the exception of a few leveling of classes. Uh, that's really all that's left. The girls' volleyball team is up and running. Their first game is, is actually right now against Highland uh, Christian Academy in Pompano Beach. Uh, we have set an open house date and communicated this out to our parents and teachers. It will be Thursday, October 26th uh, in the evening, and you all are welcome to attend. Uh, we are beginning our baseline testing in math, reading, and science next week. We will then be determining our standards reinforcement plan based on those results. We are beginning the registration process for the PSAT, um, which will be administered on October 16th. Uh, we also have implemented our advisory program and have received positive feedback from students and teachers. Uh, on Tuesday, we focus on college and career readiness, and on Thursday, we focus on social-emotional learning. That has gone over very, very well with the, uh, some of the curriculum choices that we've made. We are in the process of rolling, uh, rolling out our parent committees so that we can enlist them with their help as well in a variety of school events. So, we are moving fast and, f fast and furious, and we're very, very excited about the, the new school year. Thank you. Anybody, any questions? Commissioner Mizrahi. 
Yes, I have to say that I've gotten a lot of calls, especially when we live on 213, that it has been amazing. To the police, thank you, Chief, for everything you did so that school has been uneventful, no traffic, you don't feel it. So thank you. Commissioner Weinberg. I just wanted to say that the red carpet, the first day of school, was tremendously exciting. As, as the students pulled up, the look on their faces, when the doors opened, it was just great. Had I known that the day would end with a DJ and ice cream, I would have stayed, <laughs> but I, I, was, I was very happy to be there. And I, and I just wanted to mention, without going into any details, we should give a shout out to the Aventor Police Department and yeah. my understanding of the level of commitment and training so that um, our students will be in a safe environment. I think it's a wonderful thing and I congratulate the chief and all of the officers. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> Commissioner Weinberg, I just want to add that um, they have been coming through our building every day to uh, all the officers to become familiar with it and it's, it's really gratifying and I've said this from the very beginning, the support we have from the city is like no other city I've ever been involved in. It is amazing, and our the Aventura Police Department is is by far one of the best police departments I've ever witnessed. So thank you, thank you, thank you to each and every one of you for what you provide in this city. Thank you. And as long as we're doing our two schools, we can't hear me? Okay. As long as we're doing our two schools, we just happen to have a parent sitting there of a student, and I'd like you to come up and give us as a parent your perspective on the first week and a half or two weeks of school. Please. Unrehearsed. <laughs> Thank you, Commission. Um, I, I really appreciate, um, actually, I have a child at ACES and a child at uh, Don Sofer um, High School. I am so impressed. I am so delighted, and it's been an excellent experience so far and I can only hope that it will uh, carry through for the next four years. Um, my child comes home every day excited about what he's studying. The level of the classes is extraordinary. Um, the, I met last week with um, the uh, gifted coordinator. She was fantastic. Mr. McKnight has not spared a, a moment in getting everything together so organized so wonderful for the kids to be able to experience and to take advantage of every moment um, of the last few weeks um, in preparing for the school. I'm, I can only say thank you. And, and those of you that don't know, Raquel is our mediator and she deals with all of our red light camera tickets for the city. She is an attorney and thank you so much for, for the really really kind, insightful comments, because you're our eyes and ears. You and the rest of the parents and Eric, the student, you're our eyes and ears, so we thank you. Thank you. Um, um, how about if we wait till public hearing? I took that out of order. Is that all right? Thank you. Okay, no. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, the next item on our agenda is the consent agenda. I'm going to ask if any member of the commission would like to remove an item from the consent agenda. Dr. Marks? Um, C, please. C. One second. Okay. C. Okay, any. What? That's a permit. Well, that's all right. And anyone else? Okay, I would like to move G and H off the consent. So let me make, let me ask for a motion for the approval of the items on the consent agenda except for C, G, and H. Made by Dr. Commissioner Dr. Linda Mark, seconded, seconded. by Vice Mayor Landman. Um, may I ask the clerk for a roll call vote? Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Mizrahi? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? 
Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, for the items that were removed, I'm going to request I'm going to request that the city attorney to read the title at this time. Thank you, Mayor. 5C, motion to approve extension of time to obtain a building permit for the conditional use approval granted through resolution number 2018-63 from July 10th, 2019 to January 10th, 2020. Okay, can um, can I, I'm not sure, can I have a motion for, okay. oh, wait, I first have to have a motion for approval of the item made by Commissioner Shelley. Can I have a second made by, a second made by Commissioner Ms. Rahi. I'm now going to ask the city manager to review the item. Thank you, Mayor. Item C relates to a, and if I get stuck, Joanne will get, uh, save me. Uh, Construction permits by code are granted and they have a year to expire. This particular individual had uh, a rooftop addition to, to their apartment. It was a double apartment and they wanted to expand it onto the roof. Um, it's, I remember watching it on television. It, it, the motion was granted. It was a very, it was a very, seemed like a complicated project. As with most projects, Getting the construction documents and everything in order sometimes takes longer than a year. And in this case, the, uh, as they're moving forward, they have to get final approval from their condo board um, because there's some concern of, of structural issues. They're working through those items. In your code, it allows this commission to extend a permit by six months, and that's what they're asking tonight, to extend their permit six months so they can get these items uh, uh, taken care of and then they can move forward. Are there any public comments to this item? Then I'm going to close it for public comment and I'm going to ask if any... Oh. You have... Okay. Please state your name and address for the record. Graham Penn, Burkow, Rodell Fernandez, Larkin, filling in for Mickey Morero and Jeff Burkow. So I'm here for any questions you may have, as best as I can. Oh, you're so, representing the client. So I represent okay. the applicant. Um, uh, any commissioners wish to, Dr. Marks? Is the process far enough along with the condo board that the owners feel that they're going to be able to obtain uh, ultimate approval from the from the from the condo? Yes, doctor. I think the the short version is that the, as the manager noted, the original scope was fairly elaborate. We are now revisiting the entire idea and coming in with probably something more modest. As a, uh, that, so that we hope that that will be satisfactory to the to the board. So this time, this extension time, will allow us to complete that work with the board and hopefully get the permit issued. So we think we are now in a, in a posture where the reduced version of this project will be satisfactory to everyone. So just to ask the city manager, are they allowed to get a second extension or it's just this one extension? At this time, I believe it's just one extension. Okay, so, so your clients are fully informed that this will essentially um, end at the, the set date that is now listed here. Yes, doctor. Okay, anyone else? Doctor, um, Vice Mayor Landman. Just to reiterate, our approval does not supersede the board. The, the condo board needs- It was a condition of the approval that the yes. condo board approve it. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, then on this item, can I ask the clerk for a roll call vote? Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Mizrahi? Yes. Commissioner Narofsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next item that I'm going to ask the attorney to read is item G. Thank you, Mayor. City Commission acting in its capacity as the governing board for the Don Sofer Aventura High School. Motion approving a conflict resolution designee for the Don Sofer Aventura High School in accordance with city manager's memorandum dated August 20, 2019. Thank you so much. I'm going to open this item for public comment. Is there anyone that wishes to address it? 
Okay, I'm going to close the item for public comment, and I'm going to ask if anyone in the commission has anything to address. Okay, then I, since I've pulled it, my question is to our attorney. This says to city commission, and it's dated August 20th. This becomes part of a public record. I have never, re I never received this. So mine's really just a technical issue of never receiving a memo, yet it's being said to the public, we got this August 20th. I don't know if anyone else received it or not. So, so Mr. Attorney. Yes, that would be a clerical matter that may be corrected if desired by the commission, or otherwise it would come back at the next meeting, whatever your preference is. Well, I, I will talk for me. I have no, no reason to delay the approval of the item. I just wish we would pay um, a little more attention that if it says the city commission received something on a certain date, that we're sure that we get it in the, ta in the time frame that it's stated. Does anyone else have anything to add? The point. Uh, if I may address that, Mayor, I think what it is is that the cover memo itself bears the date of August 20th, 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, so that could serve as the actual, uh, that would serve as the actual memo. But we never got it. Right. I, and, until the printed I, agenda. I see. Okay, until the printed agenda. So if it's all right with everyone, I'm asking on everyone's behalf that we that we get them as of the date that's printed. I'm not asking them for sooner. I'm not, you know, I'm just saying if it's going on an official record and it's legal that this went to the commission, it certainly didn't go to me, and I just would like that addressed in the future. Um, then can um, I ask the clerk for a roll call vote? Uh, Mayor, I think we yep. just need a motion on that if I'm... To? Uh, to approve that item. Uh, the uh, item G, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned I, okay, that Okay, can I, uh, made by Commissioner Shelley, seconded by Commissioner Mizrahi. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, um, can we have a roll call vote? Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Mizrahi? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. The next item is 5H. Thank you, or Mayor. H5. City Commission acting in its capacity as the governing board for the Don Sofa Aventura High School. Motion to accept Don Sofa Aventura High School out of field waivers as outlined in City Manager's Memorandum dated August 28, 2019. Okay, I'm going to open this item for public comment. Anyone from the public wishing to address it? And I'm going to close it to public comment and open it to the commission. Anybody wishing to address it? Okay. Then I will address it. Um, and I think as long as he's here, I'm going to address it with your permission to the principal. Um, we have two uh, teachers that are currently out of field. Given And please come up. You can come up. Given the fact that we have very few teachers, because what do we have, 12 teachers, um, I think that it's important to know why we'd have a foreign language teacher in Miami out of field and a phys ed teacher out of sure. field. Sure, and Mayor, we just got the statement of eligibility for our PE teacher, so we only have one teacher out of field. And the reason the foreign language teacher is out of field is she taught in a private school and so when she went to renew her, she's taught in schools in Miami-Dade for 21 years, and she's taught Spanish all of those 21 years. So when she went, it left Miami Country Day and she went uh, back to the district, she filed for her renewal in May, I believe, but she still has not received her certification. So we have an uncertified person in the classroom. That is correct. And how are we handling that legally? She has paid her fees for her renewal. We have checked with the Miami-Dade to <laughs> certification department, and they have told us that she is fine to teach in, in the classroom because basically she is just waiting for her piece of paper that she will receive. And you have that in writing? Um, no, Mayor, I don't have it okay. in writing. I had it through a conversation. I, I, I understand. Okay. Um, thank you. You're Any welcome. Questions. Okay. Then can I do? Then can I have a motion to approve item 
five, one second, H. five H. Correct. Made by Commissioner Shelley, seconded by Commissioner Mizrahi. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Is it okay to do it without a roll yes, call yes, vote? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The next item is 5I. I'll ask the attorney to read it. 5I? That's what I have, 5I. No, it it's out of field waivers for ACEs. That wasn't pulled. Was that pulled? That was G and H. She pulled G and H. I thought I pulled three. No, you pulled G and H. Okay. You could pull it at this time if you Can want. Can I pull to. it? Yes. <laughs> Fine. I'm pulling it at this time. City Commission acting its capacity as the governing board for the City of Aventura City of Excellence School. Motion to accept Aventura City of Excellence School out of field waivers as outlined in the City Manager's Memorandum dated August 30th, 2019. Okay, let me open this for public comment. Is there anyone wishing, wishing to address it? Let me close it for public comment and see if there's anyone on the commission that wishes to address it. Okay, then I'm going to address it. And again, I'd like to address it through the principal. Um, seeing as there is really no shortage in elementary education teachers, uh, I'm at a loss to understand why we would have two people that, and I can't tell from the memo that I have, mm -hmm. Tony, that I don't know if they're out of field. I don't know if they're certified. It, it really doesn't okay. say. So just clarify for me. So we have ESOL waivers. Right, so they have not finished their ESOL certification, but they're in the process. Is this just endorsements? There are endorsements, correct. Okay. We have Is one there out any of field for primary, for Ms. Schrader. She, I don't know if you have the memo in front of you. I have a SRE yep, Schrader. So Ms. Schrader, she's out of field. She's um, finishing, she's already started all of her testing. She has her um, certificate of eligibility, and she's working through everything, but she's currently out of field, mainly because of the gifted endorsement. But she's also here for the primary um, kindergarten as And well. she's passed her subject area test? That's the last piece that she has. And she hasn't done that? She has not passed that part yet. Okay. Um, I will thank you. I, I, thank I can you. tell you she has, you know, 15 years in VPK. She came to us. Um, she's one of our strongest teachers, just one teacher of the month. Um, she's, she's an amazing, amazing educator for sure. Thank you. She still has to be compliant with Absolutely. Florida law, and so do we, to get the Absolutely. funding for her by October. Absolutely. Okay, if she's not certified, the dollars don't, don't fly this way. Absolutely. Okay, so please, let's stay on it and be vigilant. Anybody else? Commissioner Narasi. Again, not my area of expertise, but can we have a follow-up on this? Because there's no sure. risk. We should not be taking a risk on it with the money. Uh, so perhaps we could have a deadline of, I don't know, late September. Would it be all right if we leave it to the city manager to get absolutely. back with us? Yes. Okay. I'm absolutely fine with that. But I would like to take the opportunity to tell both principals how important it is, I think, for the entire commission to have all of our teachers fully certified um, in terms of the endorsements. I'm going to say the state changes it every year, so we can't keep up with that. But absolutely. being certified in the subject area that they teach is really important. Yeah, complete agreement. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. Um, can I go to a vote? Do we need a motion again? Can I have a motion, Bob? Made by Commissioner Shelley, seconded by Vice Mayor Landman. Let me ask uh, the clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Mizrahi? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you so much. We now move into the next portion of our commission meeting, our zoning hearings. There are quasi-judicial public hearings. I'm going to request the city attorney to read the procedures for quasi-judicial hearings. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the, uh, these two items, item 6A and 6B, are two uh, quasi-judicial items. This requires that uh, persons who desire to uh, present their testimony uh, do so. And uh, at the conclusion of the, each item, the City Commission will make a motion and uh, a determination on them. The quasi-judicial procedures of the City are incorporated into the record. At, uh, at this time, before I read the first item, we would request the uh, City Clerk to administer an oath to any persons who desire to testify on item 6A or 6B. 
If you're going to be speaking on either item 6A or 6B, I need you to stand up, raise your right hand, and be sworn in at this time. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Thank you. The, f the first item is 6A, uh, public hearing on a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Aventura, Florida, granting conditional use approval to allow the sale and service of alcoholic beverages at an indoor cocktail bar lounge area within Casa D'Angelo Aventura, located in Suite 103, 2910 Northeast 207th Street, City of Aventura, and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Can I have a motion for approval of this resolution made by Commissioner Dr. Mark, seconded by Commissioner Narotsky? Um, I'm going to request the Community Development Director, Joanne Carr, to please present the staff report. Thank you, Mayor. I've been sworn in. I would like to enter the staff report into the record. Uh, before I begin the, the uh, report, the original application was made by AE Aventura LLC doing business as um, Angelo Ia Pizza Bar Tapas. The attorney has advised, the applicant's attorney has advised that that business name has been changed to Casa D'Angelo Aventura, so all references to the applicant. I will use Casa D'Angelo Aventura. Thanks. The applicant, AE Aventura LLC, is requesting conditional use approval to allow service and sale of alcoholic beverages at an indoor cocktail bar lounge area within the Casa D'Angelo Aventura restaurant at 2910 Northeast 207th Street, Suite 103, City of Aventura, notwithstanding the distance and spacing requirements of Code Section 4.4-2 uh, A and B. Those sections of the city code require that unless a first approved as a conditional use, mm. no premises shall be used for the sale of alcoholic beverages to be consumed on or off premises, unless it is located at least 25, uh, sorry, 1,500 feet from a non-exempt place of business with an existing liquor license, and at least 2,500 feet from <coughs> a religious facility or school. Restaurants are exempt from these distances. Cocktail bars are also exempt from these distances uh, within a restaurant if the restaurant has at least 4,000 square feet of floor area and at least 200 uh, seats at tables and, and the bar. This restaurant does meet the minimum floor area. It has uh, 4,830 square feet where 4,000 is required, but it does not meet the minimum a number of seats. It is 200 is the minimum. They have 108 seats indoors. So they have provided a liquor survey that shows other establishments within those regulated distances, and that survey shows one establishment with an existing liquor license that is not exempt and within 1,500 feet. That's the Winn-Dixie Liquor Store. The, it, the survey also shows two religious facilities within 2,500 feet. That's the Aventura Turnberry Jewish Center and the Aventura Chabad and also two schools, the Huckberg Preparatory School and the Aventura Waterway School within the, that 2,500 feet. Therefore, uh, because they, they, uh, they do not meet those criteria, the conditional use is in front of you today. Um, the location plan, oh, there we are, we're up. Um, the, um, the restaurant is to be located in the new Ave at uh, Northeast 207th and uh, 30th Avenue. It's the new Aventura Park Square development, and there are four commercial spaces below the uh, Aloft Hotel. They're in one of those spaces. There's a, a layout of Aventura Park Square. This is Northeast 207th Street, 30th Avenue, 29th and they, this uh, new restaurant will be located in this area on the ground floor. Uh, and again, there's just a rendering of the four commercial spaces underneath the hotel and the location of Casa D'Angelo Aventura. And the floor plan, uh, the seats inside, they will also have seats outside and the bar area is located here indoors. I have a few renderings. It's under construction right now if you, if you drive by. Um, the front elevation. And the 
side. Interior, if you drive by, you'll see those lovely lights now are installed. And the bar area. Uh, staff has reviewed the application using the criteria for approval of condition, conditional uses in section 3173C of the city code and finds that it does meet those criteria. Staff therefore recommends approval of the application with the following conditions. And these are the standard conditions that we use for this, uh, for uh, previous types of conditional uses for um, uh, bar seating in restaurants. I'll read them off. This approval shall be granted exclusively to AE Aventura LLC doing business as Casa D'Angelo Aventura in Suite 103 2910 Northeast 207th Street in Aventura Park Square Development and may not be transferred to another owner and or operator of the restaurant or to another location. The next condition that you'll see in your staff report is that alcoholic beverages shall be sold and served only in conjunction with a service of food. The applicant has asked for a clarification of that um, standard condition and, and staff is going to recommend the, this following wording. And uh, we have had this discussion at, at previous uh, workshops. Um, alcoholic beverages shall be sold and served only in, con in conjunction with service of food within the restaurant. This does not preclude service of alcoholic beverages only without food as long as the establishment complies with the food beverage revenue percentages required by the state liquor license. The kitchen shall be open and food shall be available for service at all times when alcoholic beverages are being sold and served. In, 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 very short and succinct, uh, you may sit at the bar and have a drink without having food in front of you uh, as long as the overall establishment uh, complies with the liquor license requirements of 51% of gross revenue from food, sale of food. Um, the next uh, condition would be the applicant shall obtain an alco alcoholic beverage license from the state of Florida and begin sales and service of alcoholic beverages within 12 months of the date of the resolution or the approvals granted shall be deemed nil and void unless extended by a motion of the city commission at the written request of the applicant and provided that the applicant files that request before the expiry of the initial approval. The applicant shall comply with the hours of operation allowed to bars and cocktail lounges uh, by the city code for sale of alcoholic beverages and that is between the hours of 8 a.m. and 1 a.m. the following day. The applicant shall conduct responsible vendor training pursuant to Florida statutes to ensure that no sales are made to underage consumers, uh, customers or to customers who may have been overserved at other establishments. The conditional use approval, if granted, may be terminated in the event the city manager determines that the approval has created or is creating a disturbance to the community. The applicant agrees to immediately discontinue sale and service of alcoholic beverages upon written notice to the applicant of such a determination. And the last condition, any discontinuation of the sale and service of alcoholic beverages for a period of 180 consecutive days or more uh, shall constitute abandonment and shall rescind this approval. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much. Let me ask the applicant at this time if they have any comments. Good evening. But my first question is, when are you going to open? <laughs> in about two weeks. Hopefully in a few weeks. Can we hold you to that? <laughs> if you guys approve all our final inspections, then yes. <laughs> The app, Adrian Noto with the law firm of Greenspoon Martyr address is 600 Brickell Avenue. We've gone over the conditions with the applicant. They're in agreement with all the conditions in the draft resolution as Ms. Carr just referenced and we're here for any questions that you may have. Okay, let me ask if any members of the commission have any questions or comments. Dr. Linda Marks. Question for Joanne. Joanne, I have a question. Um, the language that you're using in terms of being able to serve liquor without food. Is that the same language that was ultimately used when this was done for Serafina or is it different? It, it was discussed um, at a workshop uh, after Serafina was uh, approved. Um, 
but no, it wasn't, it wasn't included, it wasn't clarified. I believe it needs to be clarified because it, it, it's subject to interpretation and that's the intent. The words that the staff is recommending to add just clarifies the intent of that section. Okay. That there has to be food within the restaurant, it can't be just a bar. The kitchen must be open at the time then? That's correct. Okay, another question. There's outdoor seating there? Can, is, can liquor be served outside? Yes. 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 And that's the same for other approvals that, that have been requested. But this is next door to a religious institution, right? Right next door? No? Is it? Okay. It'll, it'll front on Northeast 207th Street, so it's, it's quite a, it, it's sheltered from the, um, from the Aventura Turnberry Jewish Center, yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, um, I'm going to open up the item for public comment. Anyone in the public wishing to comment? Excuse me, if anyone from the public would like to comment, please come up. Please come up and state your name and address for the record. I'm sorry, That's okay. No problems. I really like the idea of having a new restaurant over here, right? We do too. Please state with, your please my state. My name is Maria Oria. I live on 2903 Point East Drive in the abandoned part of the city of Aventura. <laughs> I say abandoned because this is, I live in Point East. But anyway, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a... Uh, a fantastic idea. They're going to have tapas, and I will be the first one over there if they put a karaoke. <laughs> Maria, thank you so very much. Thank I you. I just only wanted to say it's a great idea. Thank you. Um, I'm going, if there's no one else, I'm going to close it to public comment, and I'm going to ask the clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Mizrahi? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Two weeks. <laughs> All right, I'm going to ask the city attorney to read the resolution B. Thank you, Mayor. A resolution of the City Commission of the City of Aventura, Florida, approving modification of the signed variance approved through resolution number 201155 for a directional sign at Aventura Turnberry Jewish Center, 20400 Northeast 30th Avenue, City of Aventura, and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Can I ask a motion for approval of the resolution made by Commissioner Shelley, seconded by Dr. Linda Marks? I'm going to request Ms. Carr, please represent the report, the staff report. Thank you, Mayor. I've been sworn in. I would like to enter the staff report into the record. The applicant, Billy Joel, as authorized by the owner, Aventura Turnberry Jewish Center, is requesting modification to the sign variance approval granted on September 6, 2011, to allow a directional sign on the south elevation of the entrance canopy to the Aventura Turnberry Jewish Center. The previous sign variance approval allowed a directional sign only on the north, so this is a modification to request a sign on the south of that entrance canopy. The location is the Aventura Turnberry Jewish Center uh, at uh, Northeast 203rd Street and Northeast 30th Avenue. This is a, a rendering of the sign, so it's exactly the same as the sign uh, existing on the, on the north side of the canopy. Um, it, if the modification is approved by the City Commission, the following conditions are recommended. Uh, number one, that the sign submitted for permitting sub substantially comply with the sign rendering attached to this report and, and on the uh, viewing now. That no further signs will be erected on the interior of, uh, on, sorry. That no further signs will be erected on the exterior of the Aventura Turbay Jewish Center, including but not limited to any further wall signs, directional signs, or monument signs and that the, uh, prior to the issuance of a building permit for the sign, the applicant will record this resolution on title to the property and provide the city with a copy of the recorded document. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask the applicant if they have any comments. Just copy it, <laughs> Thank, 
Thank you. Let me ask if any member of the commission has any questions or comments. All right, then I'm going to open it for public comment. Does anyone from the audience wish to comment on this? I'm going to close the item uh, for public comment. And I'm going to ask the clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Mizrahi? Yes. Commissioner Narofsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. And congratulations, Mr. Joel. <laughs> All right, the next item is ordinances. We, we have no first public, we have no first reading or public hearings. We have no second reading or public hearings. We have no resolutions or public hearings. Um, so that brings us to reports. Do any of the commissioners have any reports? Vice Mayor Landon? Um, I would just like to uh, request that the city manager um, goes over what has been happening on the second floor of our city hall in terms of all of the relief efforts that the city um, has really taken under with the help of other entities and organizations like our school. Thank you, Vice Mayor. But I have to tell you that it's, this has been a very collaborative effort. It actually started with uh, Commissioner Marks, Elaine Adler from Avatar Marketing Council, and it quickly became very, very well-supported uh, team effort. It got off a little slow, and but steady and ready they have been. Um, Anthony Tricala, our principal, was there Saturday. Uh, ACES was very involved in, in supporting this, not only with, with donations, but also with, uh, with, with help the football team. I think we had them for a little bit. Um, but just the community in general has been bringing in food, water, um, items, uh, clothing, and not that we're accepting clothing anymore, but clothing, shoes, baby food, diapers, and different items for, for the people of the Bahamas. Um, Stephen G, as the mayor mentioned before, was critical in starting this off with donations of planes to take um, these materials over to the Bahamas. Uh, most of it has been taken out of the building already. Our last day is tomorrow to donate. But it really has been, uh, it's been an amazing uh, effort. Um, the police department, the police department obviously has been very involved, but I have to give a special uh, shout out to Kimberly Merchant, who's really headed up coordinating the volunteers, which is kind of like chasing cats around. Um, they, she did really a fantastic job and kept it organized, kept it moving, and uh, I have to say it was uh, a great effort. Thank you. Commissioner Mizrahi? I just want to touch on this week and a few stories on what happened. I was like here every single day, also with the volunteers. The messages on the water bottles made you cry. The kids bringing water with thoughts and prayers for people in the Bahamas. I also want to commend uh, Jonathan Eisenstadt, who decided on his day, September 4th, to get back. We needed boxes that day. He went all over the city. And he also managed to go to Whole Foods and ask for water. But he got the manager, Mr. Cornelius, to donate from himself. He actually paid for some water. We were told that it was a few cases of water. Uh, Ron, I asked him to be picked up. They went to pick it up, and no, it was seven pallets of water. That means 360 bottles of water that the manager donated by himself. He actually paid for it. So those are the kinds of things that we saw during this week. Thank you to Stephen G. He was able to send the whole track, and everybody came together, and we we're just happy and blessed that we were spared and we were able to help the other ones. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Linda Marks? Um, just to share, I received a phone call from Stephen G. Help. We've got to help the Bahamas. It's very bad. 
I have to tell you the outpouring from our city manager, from the commission, from the employees has been absolutely unbelievable. We selected two locations. One was the south location, which is here, and then the point of Aventura uh, has another location, which is the north end, so that people in both ends of the town, and of course anywhere else in the town, could bring items over. And the, the point was inundated with everything that you know you could imagine. Obviously there's more here because I think more of the city knew about this particular location. But talking about the donation of water, I got a phone call from Elaine Adler. We have to get somebody to find wa get water. So I called Ron. We have to get a truck with water. And Ron was very involved with some other matters that were also simultaneously you know, taking place. And so we called Stephen G. And his trucks were everywhere. And so the person who was coordinating the truck said, I can't get a truck until Monday. Elaine Adler said the water has to be picked up today. So within an hour. So I have to tell you then we called Stephen G directly who called his trucks and said you have one hour to get there and they picked up the water along with many other things and I, I will tell you he is also ensuring that the items that are delivered to the Bahamas are getting into the hands of the people because there's been a lot of other graft going on. Yeah. He's physically ensuring people are going with these planes to ensure that everything that's been donated is getting into the hands of the people. So he's really to be commended, and the commission is to be commended, and all of you who participated, we just want to thank everyone for this very wonderful effort. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Weinberg. I just want to report that since our last meeting, uh, I attended the Florida League of Cities annual conference in Orlando, it's someone from our neck of the woods, from the Dade County, Miami-Dade County League of Cities, was installed as the new president, and it's just uh, it's worthwhile for us to be uh, we're recognized when we're up there because, as I always say, alphabetically we we, we're at the very beginning, and it's noticed if we're not there. So it was good that uh, we were represented. Okay, and I think it would be appropriate to say, Mr. Jordan Leonard is the new. Head of the, no? Isaac Salver. Isaac okay, Isaac Salver from Bay Harbor is, is the new president. Okay, anybody else? All right, then um, public hearing. I'm going to request that the city attorney review the, with the commission members the purpose of this item. Thank you, Mayor. The public comment item is a chance for the citizens and residents to provide input to the City Commission. However, the City Commission, under our rules, does not respond at this time or enter into discussions on the matter. If any follow-up action is needed, the City Manager will follow up on it in accordance with the City Charter. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, do any members of the public have any comments to make at this time? And Maria, now would be the time if you wanted to talk about the school. Come on up. Give your name and address again. <laughs> this is my first time coming to the Aventura, city of Aventura. Uh, but I wanted to say, uh, my name is Maria Oria. I live on 2903 Point East Drive, the forgotten part of Aventura. <laughs> it is because, uh, well, that's how I feel. It's, but anyway, uh, in uh, Aventura, Florida, and I live in apartment K two hundred eight. Uh, I love, I love, I just, uh, I love my place. I really love Aventura. I like, uh, one of the things I wanted to say about the high school, it's a great idea, but I also am a grandmother, and so I am a volunteer for the band. And I, my grandson plays a flute in the band in Michael. Uh, Michael Kors High School, which is part of Aventura. No, I thought it was. I thought, I, because he's, he lives in Aventura, he goes there. So I thought it was. And well, anyway, I wanted to say that we have a great band, and Mr. Seidel is the uh, band director, and, and uh, Michael Kors uh, have been winning. The football game have been winning. And I was going to invite you guys ah. to come over to the football game. <laughs> I thought that it was part of Aventura. 
If I may, students from Aventura are boundaried into the school, but the school doesn't locate physically in Aventura. Oh, uh, yeah, because yeah. my, uh, that, like I thought, I thought it was part of the Aventura uh, High School. But anyway, we have, we, the, the kids are doing a great job, and the band is doing a fantastic job. I would like for you to come and join us on Friday at 3.30, if you have a chance. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's so great to have a grandma come and talk t to us. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Anybody else would like to address any comments or questions, please come up, state your name and address for the record. Thank you very much, Mayor and Commissioner. I have been residing in the Villa Dorado condominium for 45 years. And I have been raising two children. They graduated from the best college of America. I am so proud of your city, your people, your officers and everything, I have been helping all the time. Let me bring it to your attention that I have grandchildren to go to the Aventura daycare, and every day I pass the 30th Avenue, I see many vehicles coming and going. I am requesting like other residents in the Villa Dorado to have some sign in 30th Avenue, like other public history. I will, we will refer that. The city manager has heard it. He will get back to you. Thank you very much. Okay? So he will get back to you. Thank you. Grandparents' day. <laughs> Any, anyone else? My first time here. Lori Kinney, 19655 East Country Club Drive. Aventura, Florida, through here, I know. Um, I just want to mention that it's great that the city's putting in curves around the golf course, the exercise path. Because every time I jog around there, I'm thinking a car could easily go off and hit me. <laughs> but it's great to have curves around there. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? If not, then I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn Commissioner Narotsky. Do I have a second? Seconded by Commissioner Shelley. Anybody opposed? This meeting is officially adjourned. Thank you, Mayor. Thank the Mayor. <laughs> <laughs>